Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're doing well. Welcome to another video and welcome back to another cozy wrap up. Um, you guys know the drill. I'm usually in pajamas, although I will say that tonight I'm planning on sleeping in this shirt. So I'll take this as pajamas and I'm wearing sweats, I promise. I'm cozy, you should be cozy. Before we get into it, make sure to grab yourself a drink, something to snack on, and we will talk over the stats um, from my books that I read in May and then the books that I read in May and we'll go over my thoughts and everything like that. I will say this was not my best reading month. Um, actually, I think this is my worst reading month of all of the months that I've read combined. Um, I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm just saying that it, uh, it wasn't like my most page count, the most books that I've read. Um, and coming off of a month where I read 28 books, you know, I'm not mad at it. I, I think I needed a little bit of a break. I think I burnt myself out a little bit. And so uh, I read some really amazing books, but I have a lot of stuff to talk about. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so my stats for the month of May, and that is I read 12 books this month. Um, again, like I said, not bad, just not my, my most. Of those 12 books, I read 4,130 pages. That averages out to about 133 pages a day and a book length of about 344 pages um, on an average book. I listened to 111 um, audiobook hours, which is a, a, always amazing. I'm literally always baffled by this number. <laughs> 10 of those books were mixed media, meaning I read the physical book alongside the audiobook. One was an ebook and one was a physical read. I had six five stars, four four stars, one two star, and one book that I didn't rate because I DNF'd it. As for my age breakdown, I read eight YA books, two new adult books, one adult book, and one middle grade. I read four books with disability rep, two books with mental health rep, which means that six books that I read this month had no rep in them at all. Three of the books that I read this month were written by POC authors, which means that nine were not, and five of those books had POC characters and seven did not. As for my LGBTQI plus representation, I read two books where the main character was part of the community and three books where the side characters were part of the community, which means that seven of the books that I read had no LGBTQI plus representation in them. And surprisingly, all of the books that I read with LGBTQI plus rep in them, it was all lesbian rep. And then I read 10 books written by a woman, one book written by a man, and then one book written by multiple authors. I read six books as a part of a series. I read six standalones and I finished four series this month. And then 11 of the books that I read this month, I read for the first time. And then I read one book as a reread. As for my publication years, I read five books published in 2021, one book published in 2020, one book published in 2019, two books published in 2018, one book published in 2017, one book published in 2015, and one book published in 2013. And lastly, for my color breakdowns, I read three blue books, two gray books, two white books, two orange books, one black book, one pink book, and one purple book. And stay tuned for the end of the video where I will tell you guys what my favorite book was and my favorite quote of the month. Did I say, have I been saying June this entire time? I've met May. This is my May wrap up. These are my May books, not June. I promise. I am just losing it up in here. I'm so sorry, but this is my May wrap up. May, May, May. I promise to say that for the rest of the video. <laughs> so I'm going to be honest. May has felt like it's been a million hundred years. Uh, I I can't even remember like actually reading these books. I mean, I can remember them. I can remember about them and I can remember my feelings about them, but I feel like I don't remember actually physically reading them. It just felt like so long ago. But the uh, first book that I read in the month was She's Too Pretty to Burn by Wendy Hurd. This was a book that was gifted, gifted to me from Sharon. So thank you so much to Sharon for sending this to me. She sent it my way because this is a book that she really enjoyed. And I also really enjoyed it. I will say that I, when I first started this book, I was afraid that I wasn't going to love it. But as I got more into the story, more into the characters, and when I got to the end, it felt really worth it. I ended up giving this book a four star overall. This follows a picture of Dorian Gray retelling with a sapphic female female romance at the center of the story. Um, it's Vic and Mick, no Mick and I was gonna try to remember their names but it wasn't gonna happen. Uh, Veronica and Mick and so those are the two female characters but you're also following following some side characters. There's a couple characters that are really important. Um, a guy in here named Nico who is Veronica's best friend and um, Mick is very 
closed off. She doesn't really have a lot of friends and the friends that she does have are very interested in partying and hanging out with a social scene and she's not really like that. She's a wallflower. She's very, um, social settings are very anxiety inducing for her. So, um, she's definitely an introvert, but, um, she is forced to go to this party with her friends and then she ends up meeting Veronica at the, at the party and Veronica is really into photography. However, Mick has this fear about photography. She doesn't like the way that she looks. She doesn't like being portrayed on a camera. Um, she is a very athletically built woman and that is something that she doesn't really love about her body but she's trying to learn to love herself but um they go on this little impromptu date and veronica convinces mick to take a fake picture she convinces mick that there is no role in the camera and she takes a picture but veronica is so enamored by mick that she ends up taking this picture of mick with camera and she goes with her camera and she goes and develops this picture and the picture ends up getting put on instagram and it blows up and so you're kind of battling between Mick, who is really trying to figure out how she feels about her image being out there in the world and falling in love with this new relationship. But then it turns into something really dark and interesting. It is a mystery. Um, I don't want to like share too much about this because I don't want to give too much away. It is a very interesting thriller with a lot of intrigue and questions behind it. But I will tell you guys the blurb that recently uh what actually pulled me into this book and made me want to read it and that is it says one fire two murders three drowning bodies one suspect one stalker this is the summer they won't survive so it was a really interestingly intense fun crazy ride um and it was definitely interesting in regards to the female female romance because i definitely wasn't it was a big portion of the story and it was very prominent but it also felt like sometimes it fell on the back burner and you were learning a lot more about this character's um, motivations and their life and the reason why they did the things that they did on both aspects. You are getting both Veronica's um, perspective, you're getting a little bit of Nico's perspective, you're getting a little bit of Mick's perspective. So it's a mixed bag here and it was just a very interesting well, way to tell a story. Um, and I felt like the characters were well-rounded, very well put together and I really enjoyed this one. If you're looking for a different, interestingly weird, fun, thriller, mystery, contemporary sapphic stuff <laughs> that was a lot of words mixed together but if you're looking for that i think that you'll enjoy it it was a very interesting read and definitely recommend it okay the next book that i read i actually don't own anymore i unhauled it um i didn't unhaul it because of my star rating i just i had decided that i wasn't going to keep this series and reread it so um that being said i didn't give it a great star rating either but it was the elite by kira cash i gave it a two star <sighs> Y'all, I don't understand the hype around this series. I'm going to finish the series because I am now two books in. I am invested and I want to know the end, even though I know the end. Like, you don't already know the end when you read the book, the first book. But, um, I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't love the love triangle. I don't love the character's motivations. I don't love how wishy-washy she is. Uh, if you don't know what this book is about, it follows America Singer, who, um, is part of a caste system. And the cast, the lower your numbers are, the more um status that you hold and the higher your numbers are the more like the less that you have in life um and so she decides to put her name into the ballot to become a part of the selection which is basically bachelor for the prince the prince has like 30 girls that he's choosing from to become the next queen or princess and um she goes into the draft knowing knowing that she's in love with somebody else but he wants to know that he can give her a better life and so she knows that if she goes to the draft she gets draft for the selection she will have a better life when she comes back and so she does it not thinking that she's going to win but when she gets there she ends up having a little bit more feelings for the prince than she has originally thought but she's also struggling with her relationship from her past and um yeah i just don't love the love triangle in here i think that it's very like meh and you spend a lot of the time in this character's head who doesn't want to be here and when she does find out that she wants to be here she is so up and down all over the place her feelings don't really make any sense it's just it's very chaotic i think that if i would have read this time this book at the right time if i was in high school and i would have read it i probably would have loved it but my reading experience now is just not great i just don't i just don't love my experience i will like i said continue on with the series and finish the one um but I don't think that I will read the air and the other ones like that. I think I'm just going to unhaul those ones and get rid of them. Um, I will finish out the original trilogy and call it call it quits. Because um, it's an interesting experience. And the reason why um, I'm continuing on with the series is I find them somewhat entertaining. But the entertainment factor doesn't override the amount of boredom that I feel when I read these books. So that's that. Um, I know that so many people love the series. And I get it. I get it. But I also don't get it. So <laughs> don't come for me. I'm sorry. It just is what it is. <laughs> Okay, up next, we finished off a series and I read my self-published book, book for the month and that is House of Royale by Jamin Eve. 
And this is the last book in the Secret, Secret, Secret Keeper, what? Secret Keeper series. I really love this series. Um, I really enjoyed my reread. I gave this book a five star. It was fantastic. There is a quote in here that I, I marked it when I first read it on ebook. And then when I had the physical books, I tabbed it because I love this quote so much. This is my favorite quote. So I'm just going to share it now since I have the book open. I think that it's a fantastic quote and I just love it so much. And it says, my heart swelled. And I realized the strength in a group of strong, confident women who weren't trying to tear each other down, support and encouragement. They were straightening my crown rather than trying to steal it because they all wore crowns as well. That quote is just so beautiful. And I love women empowerment and, um, you know, coming together with, with a strong group of female women that don't feel the need to pull each other down in order to feel better about themselves. And I love that about these books. It's a found family trope. It's a wonderful series. It's like these faded mate, uh, paranormal romance series. I'm not going to talk too much about this because I've continued to blabber on about these every time I read an, a new one in the series. I will say that I enjoyed it. I gave it a five star. It was a great conclusion to the series. Um, I love these characters so much. I, I give them my whole heart and soul. It is self-published. It's not the best book that I've ever read, but I have a special attachment to these books and this care in these characters. So I love them. It's a great, if you're looking for just a fun ride with these four books, I would definitely recommend it, but don't go into it thinking that you're going to get some amazing, crazy plot all that stuff. It's not that. It's just it's a fun read and I really enjoyed it. All right, it's time for the chunker of the month and that is A Court of Silver Flame by Sarah J. Mass. Is anyone surprised I gave this book a five star? It was fantastic. I will say even though it was a slow, it was a slow book, it was a fantastic book. I love Nesta even more than I did the, in, the, in the original trilogy. I liked Nesta in the original trilogy. I know that's a unpopular opinion, but I really liked her character. I thought that she brought a little bit more, um, layers to the story. She was very jaded, very closed off, very hard to connect with, even before what happens to her and what, you know, comes forth in this book. But I really love her character. I thought it was a fun, interesting, but also hard read. This book talks a lot about PTSD and anxiety, depression, and how to come back from that, how to claw your way back to the surface and figure out how to find love and self-acceptance and who you are and the decisions that you've made. And I really enjoyed how Sarah J Mass talks about that in a fantasy book. I don't I don't see very many contemporary or fantasy books that talk about how, uh, how much affect trauma and stuff that, that happens in your life and the things that happen around you and the decisions that you make can affect who you are as a person and um it was just really wonderful it was it's obviously a fantasy romance there's a lot of there's a lot of steamy scenes a lot of sex in here um but Nesta also finds a very wonderful found family group of friends um female friends that just makes this book so beautiful and wonderful and the angst in this book was just everything that I wanted it to be I can't really talk too much about this because it is the fifth book in the series and I don't want to spoil anything for those that are just reading this but I will tell you that it was fantastic I loved every second of it it was a beautiful read from start to finish and I actually procrastinated on finishing this because I was so sad that it was over. So I will definitely say that I wholeheartedly love this series. It's definitely one of my favorite series of all time, if not my favorite series of all time. Not my favorite book of all time, but my favorite series of all time. It definitely takes the cake for that and I enjoyed it so much. Okay, another series that I finished is All the Tides of Fate by Adeline Grace. This is a duology and I did finish the second book. This follows a um, girl named Amora who is an alamancer, an animancer, I think that's the word, but she is um, next in line to take the throne. But in order to do that, she has to prove her powers. She can perform soul magic as well as blood and bone, ma blood and bone magic. But on the day of her, her initiation, where she is going to show the kingdom that she is able to, you know, really uh, understand and control these powers that she has been um, given and have the responsibility of having, she things go really wrong and she ends up um, basically getting ready to be killed and so she ends up on the run with a pirate a mermaid and her soon to be betrothed and they go on this quest to save the kingdom but also for her to prove um that she is worthy of her title and of her status and it was a really interesting first book i didn't love the first book at, at by any means i thought it was slow it was really hard for me to get into it but the second book was so much better i ended up giving this a four star i really really enjoyed it um i got a lot more of what i wanted from the first book in this book i got a lot more page time with some of the characters that i really really loved um v the mermaid is just one of my favorite characters of all time she has so much sass so much just attitude and i loved her character so much but um, I also really enjoyed the romance in this book. It was kind of very hot and cold um, in this book for sure because there is a lot of aftermath from the first book that hinders the way that these characters feel about each other, but I really enjoyed it. And um, I think that it wrapped up really cleanly, nicely and neatly, which may not always be people's cup of tea, um, but 
it was definitely something that I really enjoyed to read and I, I enjoyed how the series ended. I will not be keeping this book. I did um, already promise that I would give this over to Mike so that he can read book one and book two. So I am getting rid of my Alcrate special edition, but I did enjoy my reading experience of the second one. I just don't see myself ever rereading the series. Okay, uh, another five star read from this month and I don't think anyone is surprised. I think this is a pretty beloved book for almost everyone that reads it and it's pretty uh, unanimous that this is his best work and that is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I really enjoyed this book. This is a book that very well depicts the um, experience of living with OCD, anxiety, intrusive thoughts, um, and everything that comes with that. This follows, I forgot her name already, uh, Aza, who has a, s a very small group of friends, but she has a hard time with the life that she lives because she has really, really bad OCD and intrusive thoughts. And so that takes over a lot of her everyday life. Um, her father has recently passed away and see so she's still tr struggling with the aftermath of that. Um, and then the plot of this book is not really my favorite part of this book. So it's kind of hard for me to explain, but basically one of Aza's old friends from camp, his dad goes missing and there's a reward out for his um, capture basically and so Aza and her best friend go on a hunt to try to figure out what happened and try to get this reward but during that process she falls in love with the son of the dad that's disappeared um, but this is really just an exploration of mental health and what it's like to live with a severe case of um, mental health issues like this and it was really beautifully done the only problem that I have with this book is it, it was super super triggering for me I do have OCD and intrusive thoughts and anxiety that comes along with that. Nothing near as bad as the character experiences in this book. However, I did I did have a hard time getting through it because it was just so triggering for me. But with that being said, I think that it was a beautiful depiction of what mental health is and what it's like to live with something as hard as what she deals with. I will also say this is own voices because John Green also has OCD and anxiety around OCD. And so I thought that it was really well done. It was a beautiful own voices book. Um, I gave it a five star because I, even though I didn't love the plot of this book, I think that this is a wonderful book that everyone should read to try to understand a little bit more about what it's like to go through these experiences and how, how everyone finds a different way to cope with their mental health. And there are different ways, strategies, and means of help that you can find in your everyday life and so uh i really enjoyed it it was a fantastic book i cannot wait to reread it because i can definitely see that this is a book that you can get more out of every time every single time you read it because it's just so beautifully well done so great job love this book definitely recommend it if you're looking for a good book on mental health all right up next we have redwood and ponytail by k.a holt this is a middle grade book um told in verse i gave this book a four star this follows uh two girls in middle school that are uh, figuring out their sexuality and learning how to be openly out gay and proud about who they are and what it means to um, live in a world that doesn't always accept who you are and what you what you choose to identify as and the people that you love. And so I, I thought that it was a really wonderful book for middle grade students. I also love that it was told in verse. There's also some a small amount of mixed media formatting in here and I just really really enjoyed it. I actually picked this up on a whim because I needed another book to finish in one day since my the prompt that I was the book that I was using for that prompt I ended up finishing it several days later after I started it. So I picked this up and read this book in one sitting. I don't really have a ton to say about this except for it was a really fantastic middle grade book that talked a lot about what it's like to be young and having your first love, your first crush um, while, while also pushing societal norms and not fitting into the box that everybody wants you to and how to cope with that and how to learn how to come out and be proud of who you are and the the ramifications of that. It was really well done. I really enjoyed it. And being told in verse, it was a quick read. So if you're looking for something like that, if you're looking for a good middle grade to recommend for somebody that's trying to learn about their sexuality, this is definitely something that I would recommend. It is a few of you romance, so um, keep that in mind, but it was really well done. Up next, I read a graphic novel. This is Nubia, the real one. This is by L. L. McKinney and Robin Smith. Um, this was a beautiful graphic novel. This is a graphic novel about a female black superhero. Need I say more? I don't think so, but I will. Um, I gave this, this graphic novel a five star. It was fantastic. We definitely need some more representation for female superheroes in general, but black female superheroes, colored female superheroes, is just absolutely wonderful and wild, and I loved seeing it. Um, this follows Nubia, who is living in the same, this is a DC comic, so she's living in the same world as Superwoman and, um, or Wonder Woman, is it Wonder Woman? I think it's Wonder Woman. Um, and she 
is really having a hard time because she wants to do the right thing and she wants to be able, be able to protect people around her with the powers that she has but she is hiding nobody knows that she is able to do what she is able to do and she ends up getting um being at the wrong place at the wrong time basically and um she was trying to go talk to her crush oscar and she ends up in a robbery at a gas station uh, or at a liquor store and she saves the day by um like throwing an atm at one of the robbers and she ends up on the run she is now running away from this liquor store because she doesn't want people to figure out that she is the person that saved them but while she's walking home she gets pulled over by a cop who is basically bl uh, somebody blamed her for the robbery and so it kind of sets off this whole chain of events of trying to figure out like how to be a hero when there are so many cards stacked against you when the hero is portrayed as this stereotypical white cisgendered uh, cookie cutter form of a superhero and how to step out of those societal norms but it also has a sapphic uh, romance in here the moms of Nubia are uh, two female ladies and it was, it was a wonderful representation for that um, but there also is trick warnings in here for sexual assault as well as a school shooting so go in there with some uh, caution if those are things that are triggering for you but I did really enjoy it it was wonderful the art style in here is absolutely beautiful I love the color hues and Nubia as a superhero was beautiful strong independent and I loved so much about this so love it if you're looking for a really awesome graphic novel that has to do with superheroes that has a little bit more diversity I would definitely recommend this all right, and then I picked up one of my most anticipated releases, and that is The Cost of Knowing by Brittany Morris. This book was so amazingly well done. I will say that I did not give this book a full five stars. I think that it fell a little bit flat for me in some sections, but overall, I really, really enjoyed this book. This follows um, a boy named Alex who has the ability to see the future every time he touches something with the palms of his hands. The imminent future of that object or person, um, a vision is shown of that, and so he spends a lot of his days trying to focus and cancel visions of the things that he's touching and seeing but one day he touches his girlfriend and sees a big uh fight that they're about to get into and they are on the verge of a breakup and then he also touches a photo which um shows him the imminent future of his brother who is going to die and so he spends the next a little amount of time that he feels like he has left to save his brother's life and it was a beautiful story but it's also a story about black men living in america and what it's like to grow up with the stereotype of what a typical black man is and is portrayed as and it was a wonderful book talking about racism and microaggressions and stereotypes and how people perceive the black community and um the things that they are capable of uh, it was just, it was beautifully well done, but I think that the plot dragged a little bit for me, and the character also spent so much time, in my opinion, afraid of being honest and being open and being true to who he was, that it kind of hindered the story a little bit, but I really, really enjoyed it. There's definitely some wonderful aspects to this book. I definitely, I sobbed crying in this book. It was very well done. I am not surprised that I really love this seeing as this is the author of Slay, which I also really loved. So it was a fantastic book. It'll definitely, I think it'll still end up close to the fa my favorites of the year list. But I think that there was a couple of things that I wish that I could ha could have changed in this book that I didn't quite get. And things that I wanted that I didn't quite get. So really enjoyed this, but wasn't quite everything I wanted it to be. Okay, up next is a five-star prediction that I finally finished. And that is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. <sighs> finally, I finished this book. And guess what? I gave it a five-star. <laughs> I thought that this book was so beautifully well done, so thought out, so crafty. I just, I really, really enjoyed it. This follows Laya, whose brother has just been captured by um, basically the police of this world and has take, been taken to prison um, for his crimes and her, her grandparents have just been killed. And so she turns to the resistance, the last people that knew of her brother's intentions to try to get him out of jail. But doing that, she willingly accepts to go into um, Blackliff, which is a military school to become a spy for the resistance. Um, but this also follows the perspective of Elias, who is a student at Blackliff, um, who is being trained to be basically an assassin. It's called The Masks, and it is like this military school. However, Elias is one of the few people in this school that doesn't believe with the ta tactics and politics of the world that he lives in, and he is on the verge of deserting. But he ends up getting a proposition that urges him to stay, and he ends up playing a bit much bigger role in this world than he could have ever imagined. But during that time, Elias, Elias and Elias' paths cross, and um, they 
end up meaning a lot more to each other than anybody thought that they would. So it was a beautiful story with so much political intrigue, so many questions, so many things that I was wondering till the very end, and this left off on a cliffhanger that makes me want to pick up the second book ASAP. Like I said, I love the politics of this world. I also really enjoyed how dark it was. Um, I think that sometimes with the YA fantasies, some of the authors are afraid to get a little dark, a little gritty, um, and this definitely felt on the verge of new adult, but still YA. It was very, very well done. There's definitely some angst in here, what feels like a love triangle, um, and it's definitely something that I didn't think that I was going to love as much as I did. I had it on my five-star predictions hoping that I was going to love it because I heard so many fantastic things about it, but I didn't think that I was going to love it as much as, as I did. This is definitely in the spot for one of my favorite books of the year. I really enjoyed this fantasy so much and I thought that it was beautifully well done. I cannot wait to move on to book two. Okay, up next we have a book that I had never, I didn't, I wouldn't say never, I didn't plan on reading it this month, but I picked it up for a try a chapter tag and I just had to finish it and that is A Spark of Life by Jodi Picoult. Um, this book was absolutely so amazing and interesting and thought-provoking. It was just, it was crazy. So this book follows a shooting that happens in an abortion clinic and you are following like seven or eight different perspectives in this book. All the people that um, have a part to play or are being affected by this um, active shooter situation. You start at 5 p.m. which is the last hour of this hostage negotiation and you're getting every single person's perspective in every single chapter but the interesting thing about this book is it's told backwards so you start at 5 p.m and then you go all the way back in time to 8 a.m and figure out how the characters got to where they are why they're in the situation that they're in and motivations behind each and every person's experience um in this traumatic day um so you're getting um, the perspective of Ren, who is a teenager who went to, it's not, it's not only a, a clinic for abortions, but um, she went there for a specific reason with her aunt. You're also following the um, hostage negotiator who happens to be the father of Ren, who is inside the building. You're following every single person that is in the building at the time, as well as the active shooter um, and his daughter. So you're getting so many different perspectives, but it was just told so beautifully. But the wonderful thing about this book is Jodi Picoult set this up so that at, our, at 5 p.m. at the end of that chapter, you get this big cliffhanger and you have to wait until you get back to the very end to where you pick up at 6 p.m. at the epilogue to figure out how this book played out. This book had a very interesting twist that I was not expecting. Um, something that I wish that I got a little bit more detail on and a little bit more information in regards to the twist, but I really loved how well it was done and how beautifully it was told. But this also talks a lot about uh, pro-life versus pro-choice. It's a very uh, conversation starting book. It's definitely something that you could read in a book club and have a lot of conversations about motivations and um, the reasons why people make the, make the choices that they do or the choices that they choose not to make in regards to this um, this topic and I'm trying to talk about this slightly because I don't really want to go into my own thoughts on pro-life versus pro-choice I don't think that's the point of this wrap-up but I do think that it was beautiful beautifully well done and I think that you can definitely see where Jodi Picoult stands on the topic of abortion um and I thought it was very very beautiful I think that it was a very open real honest conversation about what it means to be a woman and to have, a, have a, a very important decision to make about life and but also like it also talks about rights and whether women should or shouldn't have the right to choose that and I thought it was just really beautifully well done. I'm trying to be as um as as open as I can in regards to this aspect because I have my own opinions but it also um it also educated me a lot on the other side of the of the spectrum to what I feel. And so I think that that's a, the beauty of books is you can read something that you don't necessarily always agree with and still find something and get something out of it. So beautifully well done, really enjoyed it and can't wait to read more from this author. All right, and the last book that we have to talk, to, talk about today is actually my DNF and that is A Whisper in the Dark. This is by Jess, Jesse Elliott and KJ Sutton. Uh, I started this book several months back and I put this on my TBR as my ebook to read because I really thought that I was going to be able to just fly through the rest of the book because I had started it and I didn't finish it. This is the first book in a serial so it's literally only 96 pages and you guys I was so bored. Uh, this follows a girl who I cannot remember her name. Um, she is a vampire and um, she is coming up to her 18th birthday where they like it's called the ascension where you go to sleep and you wake up with a certain color eye and the, your, your eye color puts you in a certain 
um, status in the world. And she gets um, violet eyes, which means that she's um, like the lowest of the low, but she used to be a princess. And so she finds out that her mother cheated on her father and had her with like a half, a half vampire um, person that she wasn't supposed to. And she ends up being kicked out of her house. She loses everything and she is now on the run basically for her life. Um, I think I'm just tired of reading about books like this. Like I just want to read about a princess coming into her royalty and being a boss ass bitch. And I'm just so tired of these stories. And it was also supposed to, so, what? And it was also supposed to be smutty and I was 79, I got 79% of the way through this book and it, nothing had happened. It was so boring. I was just, I was not having a good time. And I get this serial, it's short, you're supposed to read them all back to back and then you get the story. But if that's the case, just write a book. Like, I don't, maybe I would have been more inclined, but I felt like I was getting to the end and I'm like, what is happening? What are we doing? I just don't get it. I just don't get it. So that was it. That's how I felt about it. I didn't have to, I didn't want to continue to push myself to read something that I wasn't enjoying. I didn't feel like, feel like it had something exciting that it was working towards. I was just, I was ultimately just bored. I didn't rate it. Um, even though I got a good way of, a good way through it, I didn't rate it, but, um, I did DNF it. So that was the last book that we have to talk about today. So let's go ahead and talk about my favorite quote, um, which I already mentioned. And then, um, my favorite book of the month, but I don't think anyone will be surprised. My favorite book of the month was A Court of Silver Flame by Sarah J. Mass. I thought it was just so beautifully well done. I'm sweating. Let me take this off. Um, I thought it was so beautifully well done. I really enjoyed the story as a whole. I love those characters. They have a special place in my heart. And even though I read some really amazing books this month, I just don't think that anything could quite top it. I know I'm a basic bitch. I know you guys are tired of hearing it. I know that I'm mashed trash, but it's the truth and I want to be honest with you. So that's what happened. Okay. <laughs> but that being said, that is the end of this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. Please let me know if you guys are still enjoying these long rambly chatty cozy wrap ups because I am still enjoying them, but I would love to know if you guys would like to see something different from me. Please do let me know. Uh, if you made it to the end of this video, leave a leave a coffee emoji. Coffee, tea, whatever you drink, leave the emoji for that so that I know that you made it to the end. Um, I love you guys all very much. Thank you so much for the continued support. It means the world to me. But that is the end of this video. If you liked it, please make sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And of course, leave any comments, questions, and suggestions in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.